not someday. Why not just be prepared with good fruit and good works and with faith and vision to take over? Raise, out of the ashes, raise up a Christian nation submitted and committed to the crown rights of King Jesus. Mm. Know the calling of God. Know the times also. Fourth thing to know, if you want to end abortion in Arkansas, is know the times. First Chronicles 12.32 Men of Issachar They understood the times. They knew what needed to be done. Folks, this isn't rocket science. They advertised in the yellow pages where they murdered the babies. Right. We can go there and offer help to the moms and preach the gospel. And I'm trusting God to bring back rescues. Where we'll actually go and sit in front of the doors by the hundreds or thousands. Guaranteed. Two or three hundred people were sitting in front of that abortion bill today. There wouldn't have been one baby killed. Some of us might have got thumped. Some of us might have got arrested and thrown in jail. But children would be alive. Hmm. Matthew 5, 11 and 12. Well, we're talking about children. You know what? Mom and Dad, nothing is more effective for a mom coming up to an abortion bill to see. No sign, no banner, no cross. Nothing is more effective for her than seeing a mom holding a baby or having a baby in the store. Right. That is the most effective visual that saves babies' lives more than any signs ever do. Because when they come to kill, and they see a baby. The Lord often uses that to try and change our minds and hearts. <laughs> Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and shall take all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven. Amen. For so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. In Hebrews, the Christians rejoice when their property was confiscated. We get to see Jesus. They rejoice. It's not, how do I hang on to my stuff? How do I protect my things? That is an end. How do I worship Jesus? Friends, God doesn't bless you to increase your standard of living. He blesses you to increase your standard of giving. That's why God blesses you. Fifth thing, fifth answer to the question for knowing is knowing the battle. Knowing the battle. This isn't some new thing, and this is not unique to Arkansas or America or the 21st century. This is in the Garden of Eden, the seed of the serpent, battling with the seed of the woman. This is Jesus and the devil fighting it out. And Jesus has already won. We just got to go and spread his kingdom. Amen. We just got to go and mop up and get rid of the devil's works. It was already mentioned. The gates of hell will not prevail against the church. We've got to know that battle. That victory is assured. Wait a minute, Cal. You read something about the saw thing and the sword thing. You know what? When God gives, when, when the time comes for jail, misunderstanding, firing from your job, physical pain, discomfort, torture, martyrdom, God has promised to give His grace to you. That's right. Not only for you to endure, but for you to have joy unspeakable and full of glory. I can tell you this, you can have more joy with a broken hand in a jail cell if you've got Jesus in your heart. And you're doing what God's called you to do. Joy and blessing are in the path of believing and trusting and obeying. They're not in the path of making sure our flesh is comfortable. Joy comes from the Holy Ghost, not from circumstances. Matthew eleven twelve. Kingdom of heaven, kingdom of God. Suffer is violence. Violence 
forceful men, strong men, bold men, they take it by force. There is a battle. There is a battle. Amen. Yeah. When we look at the battle during World War II and before that, when the Nazis and the Germans dehumanized people and killed gypsies and Jews and mentally retarded people, we look back and we think, what kind of religion did the churches have back then? Mm -hmm. Who were quiet, who made people feel good in their buildings. Mm -hmm. The Nazis didn't mess with churches that had nice <coughs> meetings in yeah. nice buildings. Yeah. They left them alone. Yeah. <coughs> but when a preacher would stand up and say, we're going to go love our neighbors as ourselves, and what you're doing is sinful and wrong, then we had some conflict, didn't we? we did. mm. Then we had some martyrs. Know this about the battle. It's ain't a new deal. It's not a local deal. It's an eternity and international deal, isn't it? Mm. Wow. The churches in China that are looked to and respected the most are not the ones with the most money. They're not even the ones that send out the most missionaries. Mm -hmm. They're not the ones with the fanciest buildings. Wow. They don't have it. The churches yeah. in China, the ones that are most honored, yeah. are the ones that have produced the most faithful martyrs for Christ. Wow. Mm -hmm. wow. Grandma, Grandpa, Mom, Dad, raise your children, not just so they'll say, yes, I believe in Jesus in front of a firing squad. Mm -hmm. Raise your children so every day they'll say, no to their flesh, and yes to the Holy Spirit. And they'll be living witnesses following your example, Mom and Dad, mm -hmm. Grandma and Grandpa. Actions. I'm not too good at theories and all this heady stuff. And I just know that the Greek word for go in the Bible means go. <laughs> that's, that's, that's my deal. Actions. The first action to take is to count the cost. Amen. Count the cost. Yeah. If we really want to end child killing in Arkansas, if we really want to do rescues, if we really want to <coughs> spend less time doing other things and maybe one day a week at the mill, if we really want to get along with those people over there, take turns with them at the mill, and get other people and motivate them to get going on shutting this place down, Count the cost. What's it going to mean for your time? For your money? For your vehicles? For your home? For your business? For your church? What's it going to mean? It's going to cost something. Your future. For some of us, your daily bread. What's it going to cost? I can promise you this. Anything you lose while obeying and loving and serving Jesus is nothing compared to what you gain mm. <laughs> in this life and the next. Even if you suffer or are poor or lose things or lose stuff, God has promised grace. God has promised to give you peace. And if your mind is stayed upon the Lord, you'll have peace. Mm. Count the cost. Listen, don't dive in. Don't dive in to pro-life sacrificial ministry or rescues. If your family's not with you, don't don't do that yet. Mm. If you're not disciplined to say no to your, if if you're struggling with an area of sin, or you're scared to death, mm. or you're struggling with some area of your flesh or addiction or something in your life, you know what? Don't dive in to this yet, because the devil will beat you up, mm. and you will lose. Mm. You'll think you'll be pleasing and serving God, mm. but you will lose. God wants your family, your children, your parents to walk in order and love together. Amen. No, you shouldn't love your family more than Jesus. But I can testify to this. If you trust God and serve God and communicate well with your spouse and your children or your parents, God will do great things. Amen. And even if you're, for a season, not allowed to be out on the battlefront, 
even if you're not allowed to be out there for a while, because you're cleaning up some things at home and getting your house in order, mm -hmm. I can assure you this, it'll be worth it when you do get back to the battle. Mm -hmm. And this battle is not dependent on you being there or not. Mm -hmm. It's all dependent on Jesus. Amen. It's all dependent on us just loving and serving and keeping our hands to the plow of looking at Him. Count the cost. The second action to take is trust God. The devil believes in God. The devil has faith in God, but he doesn't trust God, does he? We're commanded to trust God. Hebrews 11, verse 6. But without faith it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Trusting God, believing in God is yes, there's a God. Trusting is God, I'm going to seek you. I'm going to seek you. I'm going to believe that you're going to give me a new heart and a new mind to do what's right, to follow you. And there's time when you just kind of step out of the boat. <laughs> when it doesn't make sense to just step out of the boat and follow Jesus and either walk on the water or sink trying, mm -hmm. but trust Him and watch Him come and honor His promises. Watch Him come and bless you for it. Mm -hmm. Trusting God also means praying. We have the authority in prayer to bind all demonic forces. To bind all the spirits of murder, and greed, and lust that are behind abortion. We have the authority to do that. We have the authority to move mountains. We need to pray like God is actually going to listen to that mm -hmm. and answer that. Mm -hmm. We need to submit to His timing and sovereignty and not say, do it right now. Mm -hmm. But we have to believe that God is going to do this work and shut these abortion mills down. We have to believe that God is going to turn hearts to Himself. Trusting God also includes making no provision for the flesh. Picking up your cross daily and following Him. Mm -hmm. Trusting God also means not trusting man to provide for you, to understand you, mm. to come alongside you, but also trusting God to do His work. Number three of actions, just show up for the battle. Mm. Just show up. Hebrews 12, 1 through 4. See, when the Bible kids... When the Bible was written, they didn't have chapters and verses. It was just written, okay? So this 12 thing not, wasn't even really in there. So right after we talk about the folks getting martyred and conquering kingdoms, the author says this. He says, Wherefore, seeing we also are, comest about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. For consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest ye be wearied and faint in your mind. Before anybody faints on the street, they faint in their mind. Hmm. Ye have not yet resisted unto blood, striving against sin. Some of us have resisted unto blood. i tell you this, some things hurt, but nothing feels better than having the peace of God amidst the battle. And when the battle is over, we should wear a crown. Jesus, it will all be worth it all when we see Jesus. Jesus. And we don't even have to wait till then. I believe Jesus could be turned tonight or tomorrow. Mm. Everybody, is your heart right with Jesus? Mm. Or is the Holy Spirit pounding on you right now with sin? Great. Mm. Confess it, repent. Mm. Let somebody pray for you. And let's keep trusting and moving forward with Jesus. Show up for the battle. Psalms 108, 13. Psalm 108, 
through God he shall do valiantly. Mm. For it is he that shall, shall tread down our enemies. Trust him. Trust him to tread down the enemy. Trust him to help you be valiant. You do not have enough courage to face the devil in sin. You do not. You do not have enough power to even say no to your own temptations in your flesh. You don't. And those who try, and some who conquer some of them, they're the scariest folks I know because they make really good Pharisees. <laughs> Look at how good I am. Look at the rules I can obey. Mm. That's the scary part of the deal. No. No. We're all unprofitable servants. Mm. Just trusting Jesus for salvation. Trusting Jesus for endurance. Trusting Jesus to bring these gates of hell up. The rest of them. A lot of them have, folks. And the rest are coming down in Amen. the name of Jesus. Show up for the battle. Fourth action to take is to recruit and invite others for the battle. <coughs> recruit and invite others for the battle. Jesus commanded us in Luke 10, 2 to pray to the Lord of the harvest and to ask Him to call forth labors into the harvest field. Amen. And to be a shining example of joy and peace and victory in your soul while you're in that battle. The past 20 some years, Sadly, I've seen a lot of families get beat up and chewed up and spit out by the devil because they weren't prepared for the battle. And the battle got too thick and they didn't know how to rest. Mm. And they got hurt. And hurting people, what do they do? They hurt other people. They didn't take the time to get healed. Mm. They didn't take the time to disciple their children. They didn't take the time to disciple their spouses. Mm. People get hurt. Churches say, we don't want to do that anymore. The cost is too high. Friend, if nobody goes with you, Jesus will. He is the good shepherd. He is the God of grace and mercy. He is the God of love and peace. And I don't know your circumstances. I don't, I don't know those. I know this. I know that when we just trust Jesus and keep our hand to the plow and love other people around us, He will give us grace. Maybe you're not in a position to risk going to jail and doing rescues and sit-ins. But why not raise your kids that way? Why not raise your kids to live missions-focused lives? When well, we sit here tonight grieving that over 3,000 Americans have been murdered by surgical abortion today, today in China, over 30,000 Chinese children have been murdered by surgical abortion. Still, today in the world, 7 billion people in the world, half or more have never even heard a clear presentation of the gospel yet. Mom, Dad, maybe God will call you or your children to be foreign missionaries, to invest their whole lives to serve Jesus, leading some other tribe to Christ, planting a church in some city that's never had it before, encouraging people that are discouraged, helping them get back on the Jesus road. <laughs> Nothing could be more exciting than that. Lastly, the last action to take is to stand with those who get wounded in the battle. Mm. 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 Jail is painful. Getting beat up is painful. Getting lied about. Family, church, <coughs> stuff, relatives. There could be a lot of pain in this. Amen. And when people are hurting and going through pain, it's your duty to encourage them and love them. That encouragement might mean, hey, I love you and I think you're in sin. 
that encourage me mean I'm coming over to bless you. Mm. That encouragement might mean writing him a check. That encouragement might mean a phone call to call and check on him and love him. We need to be, I need to, we all need to be doing a better job of loving and encouraging each other, yeah. more, don't we? Yeah. Yeah. Maybe the Holy Spirit's pointing someone to you this week that someone came to your mind and you felt like, I should give them a call. Yeah. I should tell them a good Bible verse. I should stop by their houses I'm driving by and just say, I love you, praying for you. We can keep people in the fight if we love them and encourage them more. And we can bring back people to the fight if we stand with those who are wounded in battle. Hebrews 13.3, remember those that are bound. Amen. And those in bonds, as if you were bound with them. Yeah. Those who are getting abused, mistreated <clears throat> with, as if you yourselves were going through that. Amen. You, what really has been encouraging me the last few months is Nagma Abedini. Her husband, Saeed, is being tortured in an Iranian prison right now. Mm. And what does she do? She talks about Jesus <laughs> and how many thousands of Iranians are coming to Christ and the need and the love of God. Sure, she's praying and mobilizing too. Sure, she's very frightened. Sure, her kids are weeping and traumatized because their daddy's gone. <clears throat> but God has given her grace to stand. Mm. And I'm encouraged by that. God will give you grace to stand too. Come on. It isn't, I'm going to decide to do that. that, that you know, that's not it. What I'm asking you to do, what I believe the Holy Spirit is asking you to do, it's just, it's just as simple. You just surrender and say, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, I'm going to love you with all my heart. I'm going to love your word. I'm going to count the cost and trust you that I can pay it. I'm going to pray, Lord. I'm going to pray with faith, Lord. I'm going to pray with claiming the promises of God. I'm going to show up at the battle. I'm going to show up at the battle. The battle is already going to be won in prayer and praising and worshiping God. That's where the battle is won. But let's show up to gather in the victory fruits. Amen? Amen. Let's gather up so God can teach us more things through suffering. Let's recruit and invite others for the battle. Do it with joy. Not, I'm good, you're bad, you should be doing what I'm doing. Mm. You know what? Yeah. That's not attractive, is it? That doesn't work, folks. That doesn't work at all. Let's stand with the wounded in the battle. Let's pray. Mm. Jesus, I surrender myself to you, fresh and new today. I thank you for the love you shared on Calvary. I thank you for the love you sh shared every day since then. Thank you for your mercy and calling. Lord, I pray for these brothers and sisters that you bless them, give them joy in the Holy Ghost, mm -hmm. give them grace, give them mercy, give them compassion, give them hearts of pure gold to love you and love others. Yes, Lord. Prepare them for suffering. Yes. Prepare them for victory. Prepare them to conquer nations. Prepare them to close abortion clinics and to be martyred. Whatever your will on whatever day it is, help us to be joyful and faithful as we surrender to you in this Jesus. Lord, I pray for every child here that they would surrender their lives fully to you and they never know the depths of sin. I pray for every parent here that they would surrender every day to you and have such pure, clean hearts mm. that when their children here pray, they think that Jesus is looking at them right in the room. Because they'll know you and know, their, know, the, know your presence, know how, how you operate, Lord. Jesus, you asked in Luke 18, 8, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on the earth? Well, I don't know about that. But I pray, Lord Jesus, that he'll find faith in his after house, in the Kaiser, in the Yoder, in the Hagen, in the other houses here, that he'll find faith, that he'll find love, 
that he'll find forgiveness and purity, that he'll find righteousness. Lord, help our words to glorify you and strengthen one another. Help our actions to be one of servanthood and victory, Lord. We close with this. Lord, we pray in the name of Jesus that you will shut down that abortion mill yes, yes. here in Little Rock. Yes, we declare Lord. it closed. We declare every preborn baby in Arkansas protected by love and by law in the name of Jesus. Amen. We trust you, Lord God, to rebuke the darkness, the lies, the apathy, hypocrisy, and wickedness that keeps the killing going. We tear them down in the name of Jesus, and we charge forward in victory, knowing that you will be glorified. Give us grace to endure, and give us joy in every step. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Marching orders. Amen. Amen, right? Josh, Come on. Come here. Amen. Okay, we're going to meet um, at 7 a.m. right out in front of the abortion mill. Um, now, let's not park up on the, you know, by that lady's business. We don't want to upset her and her six, well, her six parking yeah. spaces. But uh, it, was it still okay to park they're, over there? They're not open tomorrow, so it, it'll be free. It'll okay. Be open. Park wherever you want. Uh, you could also park on the right side of the road on the way down to the abortion clinic. We got that uh, cleared up today that uh, as you're going south... There will be a motorcycle there. You don't want to park. <laughs> <laughs> Do it. Let's pray for Kevin. Okay. <laughs> uh, so we're going to meet at 7 a.m. This is serious. Listen, we got to be serious for a second. We're going to have a time of prayer, just like we did this morning. And as soon as we finish...